I'm CK. Tonight we're going to start on a Danny Sound MM VCA, so voltage controlled amplifier from Danny Sound. I forget what the MM stands for. I bought this from funk.co.uk, the my go-to place for buying your rack modules. They're in the UK, I'm in the US, it doesn't matter. They provide great support and very timely uh, shipping, so very happy with them. So let's look at this VCA and see what it's all about. Hope you enjoy the video. So here we are, the MMVCA uh, from Danny Sound. Now, uh, the build guide, which is available through this QR code, is pretty good. Uh, he discusses a lot of the philosophy behind it, which is nice. Uh, it's based on a, uh, I mean, it's inspired by uh, a Moog design. Uh, he also talks about making modifications to certain uh, resistor values and other values just in case. He has some interesting ideas about uh, assembling boards that you may want to look into. They may suit your temperament. And the picture, he's got a lot of pictures. They're okay, but they're uh, somewhat stylized. Let me, let me pull this over here so you can see. They're a little stylized. Instead of showing uh, the real color of the board, it's a green circuit board, uh, they will just, he just highlights areas in uh, the file he used to create these, saying resistors go here, resistors go here, resistors go here, which is great. I'm not going to say it's bad. I just personally prefer pictures of the actual uh, circuit board and actual components. But that's, again, nitpicking. So uh, in general, his guide is very good and very comprehensive. So I think you'll be successful with it. Let's see what's in the bag. First, it's three bags. A uh, bunch of parts, the front panel and light pipes, and uh, the PCBs. So let's look at the PCBs first, because I always like to look at those. Let's see what's up. Okay, gold tone solder pads, and they are through hole. All the values of the components are listed on the board. So, again, if you don't want to look at the build guide, you don't have to. In here also, I'm going to put the PCBs in that little bin. Also in this bag are the uh, various transistors uh, and again I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little grumpy and this is not the kit designers fault this is uh, thunk uh, this is too much plastic we don't need individual bags for each transistor set let's look at the circuit board I mean the front panel cut this open. Well, maybe, see, I'm such a hoarder. I'm saying, eh, don't cut it open. This is a nice bag with a nice grippy top. Okay. So, I've got CV1 offset, output, audio inputs, couple of pots, uh, and two more CV inputs, and I don't know what's, I think these are, let me look at the pot board. Oops, I've got it upside down. So these are also going to, these are also a couple of pots and uh, LEDs, I believe. Yeah, those are LEDs coming, LEDs coming through those holes. Nice enough board. Silk screening is very crisp. And I'll save that bag. Now, in this bag, we've got actually quite a few parts. 
So here's all the mechanicals, as he says, a mechanical bag, uh, all the pots, headers, uh, some trimmers, power cable, of, of course, standoffs and screws. Here we have two ICs. I think they're op amps, but uh, I think I recall that. Let me let me take a let me take a look. Yeah, they're two TL072 op amps. Bunch of resistors. Again, they're in individual bags, which I'm not a big fan of. Yeah, see, this is too many little bags. This is reminiscent of that distributor in northeast of the U.S. who does a very similar thing. More, more little bags, more little bags. LEDs, red LEDs this time. And we've got... Okay, so we've got two different sets of uh, BC560 these are not matched. So uh, they haven't been balanced against each other or whatever. Uh, check to make sure that they have equivalent values. These are, so as we put it together, we want to make sure we don't want to put these 560s, which can go pretty much anywhere a 560 goes, with these, which are the matched pair. And there's also a matched pair. Uh, and he, again, he calls out there for 103, 104, 107, and 108. So we want to make sure we get those in the right place. Bunch of caps. Actually, only two disc caps. That's interesting. Uh, some big electrolytics. Of course, if it's reminiscent of a Moog design, big electrolytics is a good idea. And some more uh, 550s this time, not matched. So use them as you like. And then here is, oh, knobs and a little Allen wrench. Well, that's polite. And that's what we have in the bag. So a good bit of soldering to do, which is not bad, just be prepared for that. And I'll get the soldering iron heated up and we'll start putting this thing together. Okay, we'll start on the big logic board. Now one thing he did uh, mention or suggest here, which is something I have not done, is he suggests raising the PCB on like 25 millimeter uh, standoffs through the mounting holes and then dropping all the resistors in and then soldering them from the top. That certainly sounds like an interesting idea. I don't have that handy right now, so I'm not going to do that, but uh, it's a good suggestion. You can always go to Thonk's website and download the build guide, even if you don't buy the kit. He does have some interesting uh, thoughts and techniques listed there, so you might be interested. So as usual, we're going to put all these resistors on the board, and I'm going to not have any commentary during that. I'll just speed up the cameras uh, or the video so you can watch it. Uh, come together and as I'm doing that I'm going to be listening to WQXR uh, out of New York City the best classical music station on the planet in my opinion I've been listening to them all my life and I listen to them through the WQXR app on my iPad I'm sure you can get it anywhere you want uh, it's an excellent classical music station tonight uh, I'm going to be listening to the uh, 
Lemon Con in Suite Opus 22 by Sibelius. And you know I love my Sibelius. So, all the resistors going on the board. So resistor time is over on both boards. Now, just to point out, this look like this looks like it might be a pretty dense board to put together, but actually the solder pads are reasonably far apart. It's not that bad a job. Uh, I've had much tighter Eurorack boards in the past. This is pretty straightforward. It's not a difficult uh, resistor soldering job. Just a whole bunch of them, of course, and again, a whole bunch of plastic bags I'm going to be disposing of, which makes me kind of grumpy. Now, let's find some diodes. There they are. Got light em em emitting diodes and some Zener diodes. They go up here, which makes sense because power connectors coming in here, so you want your polarity protection as close to the power connector as you can be, or reasonably close. I mean, theoretically, you put, could have put them closer, but this is just dandy. I think he has the res inrush resistor before the diode instead of after it but I haven't traced the circuitry. And I don't see, uh, I didn't look at all the documentation on the Thonk website yet for this, uh, but I didn't see a schematic. He may not provide one. Of course, we're making sure polarity is right as always. And we're going to put the op amp sockets on the board. And I got to remember which bag these are in. They're probably in this bag with the ICs themselves. But I could be wrong. And I am wrong. There are the ICs, but I don't know where the sockets are. Maybe they're in the mechanical bag. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're in the mechanical bag, and they're these, uh, the round pin and round hole sockets. These are, generally speaking, uh, sturdier than the traditional socket, and they're just fine. They're just different. Uh, I find it a, li a little more difficult to press an IC into these sockets, but it's not too bad. So I'll take my locking ply, uh, tweezers and clamp the socket to the board. Actually, why don't I do that one further up first? They're the same socket, of course. Clamp the socket to the board so it's gonna be flat and not move around while I'm soldering it.
the only thing you have to ever care about with the tweezers in place is your iron tip, soldering iron tip can sometimes touch it, uh, touch the tweezers, and if it does, the tweezers are a pretty good heat sink, so it starts uh, sucking heat away from your soldering tip pretty quickly. Okay, now we're going to put the capacitors in and I'll probably go back into fast motion for this because there's nothing too exciting about these. Just make sure you get your electrolytics with the polarity correct. Now we're going to put the matched pairs of 550, B550, BC550 transistors in. Uh, now again, I, I haven't seen people matching transistors in the past. I mean, I've obviously, in, not obviously, in guitar amps I've biased and matched tubes uh, a lot, uh, the output tubes, uh, 66s and so on, uh, but I haven't ever done that with transistors. I'm going to have to read up on that a little bit. Now one thing he cautions you strongly about, there are two things here. First, there are 550s which are not matched, so we're, we're not using those right now. These are the matched ones, and we also have 560s, so the numbers can look similar make sure you're using the right ones. Yeah, I'm going to have to do a little more research on that to see the benefit uh, in a circuit like this to uh, matching pairs of transistors. I, again, because I don't actually know, because uh, I haven't traced it out yet to see what these actually do, knowing that would help a lot. So here's 103, and of course make sure the flat face faces the flat outline on the PCB or you will be sad. And again, look at this. This, you know, transistors can sometimes be finicky uh, to solder onto the board, but look at these big pads with lots of space between them. You're not going to have any problem with these uh, transistor leads, soldering these transistor leads at all. This is really nice. You can just go at full speed and you're not going to bridge or have any other issues like that. I'll, trip, I'll trim those after I get the other 550s on. Q105 and Q106. VCA1 balance and VCA2 balance. 100R and 50R, and he points out that the uh, circuit board is silk screen 47R, but it really means uh, 50R. And pins are a little bent. And again, these, these are uh, going a particular order. It's pin one, two, three, and that's one, two, three. So make sure you 
put them in right, though theoretically, if you get it wrong, it's not the end of the world because you could just work it the other backwards, but better to do it the right way. Now we're going to put the power connector on. Always important to get it the right way. And he does use an actual photograph in this one to ensure that you've got the notch, which the notch makes sure that you've got the negative red end going the right way. He's got a photograph so you can see the notch. And we're going to put the female header on this board. And the female header goes like so. Oops, I'm going to have to trim that, I guess. Because we're going to mount these boards like so, uh, which of course makes sense if you ever want to be able to get at these trimmers and also plugging in the power cord, but it just means you're able to get at the uh, trimmer screws, which is really important. So we cut two pins off this pin header set. And now we'll go ahead and put the op amps in their circuits. I mean sockets, for crying out loud. Get the pins in a little bit more. The These round hold sockets are a little less forgiving than the rectangular standard socket, but not bad. Okay, all the pins are in, no pins are bent on up amp one. Okay, all the pins are in, no pins are bent on up amp two. And that's it for the main logic board. So that'll be it for this evening. Gotta go feed the cats. I did not look up paired, resist, uh, paired transistors, so I apologize. Now let's finish up the pot board. We're going to put a couple of transistors on now. A couple of 3904s, which we've got right here. And there's a 560. Oh, we already did the 560. Come on. So as we put this on, you'll see that we're going to mate like this. The pots and so on are going to be on this side. There's an empty space in the middle pretty much, which is different than a lot of other designers who put, uh, who mate like that. But this one mates like this, which is nice because again, the pots uh, the trimmers are available on the back very easily to adjust, calibrate, or do whatever you want to do with them. And also, uh, I didn't mention this, but the author of the kit or of the build instructions offers an opportunity to put some uh, raised uh, posts in for a couple of resistors that you may want to 
adjust that you may want to tinker with and that also is facilitated by having most of the circuitry on the back. I chose not to do that this time. Uh, if I like this uh, VCA, I may buy another one and uh, configure it differently, but we'll see. I mean, there are, I shouldn't say that because there are so many Euro rack options out there that it's hard to buy more than one of something because you want to try everything out there. It's like ice cream flavors. You want to try all of them. So pegged one leg of the header and again heat the solder. Make sure it's perpendicular. Everything's good. And now we've got two standoffs to mount. Put all this screws and so on in here. Screws are all the same size, it appears. Let me double check. Actually, they're not all the same size. So these are 11 millimeter. So these other two, these smaller ones are for mounting to the rack. And these are the ones we want. It's a little, I'm a little, un oh, okay. The one hole that doesn't have uh, any plating on it is, of course, where the standoff goes. Now, I'm going to screw this in just temporarily and see about how the pots interact. Okay, so that pot's not going to, oh, it might hit that. And I'm always worried, I'm sorry, I'm going to, if I'm going to stick this in the ground. I want to make sure this screw head does not interfere with the base of the pot. No, it doesn't. Works just fine. Even though I don't know if he's going to want me to trim the uh, base of the pots off. Some designers like that. But we'll see. I'm just going to go with what we have right now. And we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. The other spacer goes down next to the pin header. And now, of course, uh, the typical admonition that we're going to start putting the pots and jacks on the board. Do not solder them until we're ready to uh, put the front panel on, at least test it in position so we can make sure everything is aligned correctly. So one thing we do have here is, I don't know if you can, right here Or where two LEDs will go. Now, they don't push through the holes. Instead, this kit designer has decided to use light pipes and uh, retaining clips to do this. So, Trying to see if I have anything dark to set this on. I really oh I used my dark, my polishing cloth. So we've got two plastic light pipes, and we're going to install them from the front. 
and then put these black retaining clips around the base of them to hold them in place. So now we don't have to worry about taking the LEDs, having them raised up off the board and poking through uh, the front panel as we do with most Euro racks, which is not that big a deal, but uh, this designer chose to use light pipes and keep the LEDs more closely on the board. We'll see how it looks when it's powered up. Now we start putting our pots. So we have the BK B100Ks go here. Now I just have three things mounted, but I'm going to give it a little preliminary fit to see how the heights are. And as you'll notice, I put the standoffs exactly the wrong way. I don't know why I did that. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm silly. Uh, now I'm going to put this on here, and I'm not sure that I wasn't correct before. I think... Because right now, again, when I look at your rack, and I'm doing the uh, mounting of the front panel, the control panel, uh, or the faceplate to the front panel, one component drives the distance, the tallest component in the uh, panel. In this case, right now, that's these blue uh, body color potentiometers. The blue ones still have a good bit of play. We could go another, uh, geez, Three sixteenths, I don't know, a lot of distance. Now what I'm also going to do before, and I know he hasn't, this is not the way uh, you typically would do it, but I'm going to put a couple of the jacks on and see how they fit. to see how they fit in terms of where the top is. Okay, so now one jack in place and the jack, as you can see, now the jack defines the height because if we put a jack on either end, A jack on either end and you'll note that now the jacks are defining the height. The jacks are actually uh, higher uh, body-wise than the top of the green body potentiometers. So that's what I always like to find out. Okay, which component drives the height of this whole thing? And the jacks do, so when I start soldering, I'm going to do the jacks first because they're the ones who uh, define how the other components fit in the grand scheme of things. And I'm going to tweak these legs a little bit. 
I often fight with these spring-loaded legs. I like them to be a little spring-loaded, but they're often so spring-loaded that they're a pain to get through the slots, and I just dropped a jack. Didn't drop it, caught it just in time with my educated catching wrist. The other thing that's a little bit interesting about this, or interesting to me, about this board design, and let me trim off these legs before I say that, and you can see it on this board. I don't know if it is on, yeah, no, it's not on this board. Uh, it's interesting that we've mixed, we've got, most of these are half watt resistors, but then we've got these two quarter watts in there. I, I just wonder why he chose to do that. Don't know. Okay, now we're going to put the rest, we're going to put all the jacks on, and then we're going to put the front panel on, mount everything up, and uh, interestingly enough, when the, uh, the author of this kit, when we get to step 47, when we put uh, the jacks on, he says, you know, solder one pin on the lower jack, one pin on the upper jack, and then reflow the solder while applying pressure to make sure. Kind of like we have been doing all along with our other components like the pin headers. Now with everything in place, let's go for the first complete fit check. down here. These two are giving me a little, not the jacks, the potentiometers are giving me a little static. There we go. All right. So that's the stack. I'm going to do a couple of, solder a couple of legs. I'm going to bridge that one. Did I bridge that one? I did. Unbridged. Now I've just switched to a larger diameter. piece of solder for the rest of these big pins. Oops, and look at that, I missed a pin there. On that pot, that would have been sad. Okay, I believe that is all the soldering for this kit. Oh, he did want, I'm sorry, he did want me to push the LEDs up against the back of the light pipe. I don't really care about that. LEDs are, you can take it or leave it. Okay, now we're gonna put the panel nuts on and as is typical, I am not gonna put the washers behind these nuts. I don't like the way washers look, so I tend to avoid them 
and again in my my rack never goes anywhere but in my shop or studio so I'm not worried about any particular damage or things coming loose because it's not subject to bouncing around or that type of thing. Get a patch cord and make sure all the jacks are operating smoothly. Yes, they are. And now we're going to put, make the pin headers. That went together just fine. And we take our screws into the standoffs, snug everything down. Oops, and almost dropped the screw, but saved it. That screw head rubs up a little bit against that electrolytic cap, but not a big deal. And I'm going to put the power cable in just for completeness. Now, the final difficult part, which is putting the knobs on these pots and making sure the lines point roughly the same direction. No, it's perfect. Perfect enough. So that's the way the unit looks. And now it's time to calibrate it. Now we're ready to test, give it a quick run up. So tonight we're going to be using <coughs> Bifaco MIDI thing to get MIDI input from my little keyboard, Bifaco ADSR to create the envelope, the ADAX systems oscillator, and that's all going into this Danny Sound uh, VCA going into the pile amp. Now making a guest appearance, because I don't have an LFO out here in the uh, workshop, I brought the uh, Moog Mother 32 out here to tap into its LFO to show you some of what that does. So let's see, we've got a standard, Oop, let me zoom in, I'm sorry I'm getting in the way of the camera, let me zoom in on the, so I've got a relatively so I've got a relatively non-stressful uh, ADSR, slight attack, a little bit of, <clears throat> slightly more decay, and then a little bit of release, and it sounds like. Everything you'd expect it to sound like. If we take all the envelope parameters down, we get Let me move the mic down closer. Just a percussive type sound. So again, no surprises. So let me pump up some things here. So you can you can hear. So you can hear. I believe 
that it's a little bit rounder, a little bit fatter than a plain vanilla VCO. Uh, it's got some That's the soft clipping he's adding in there, which is very nice. Now uh, I'm going to bring the uh, LFO in. It's set all the way slow right now, and it's a triangle wave wave LFO. So let's um, with that see here what that adds to it. Now that's a very slow LFO rate. I'm going to turn it up about 10%. Now turn it up about 50%. And again, we can make it more subtle. We can make it take it way down. Or take it way up. I have not taken it all the way up. So let me hear. I may have to turn the sound down immediately. Now let me take the LFO speed all the way up to 100%. So you can do a lot of stuff with it, as you can tell. So it's a good... It works fine as just a plain vanilla VCA. And then adding in uh, the LFO... I mean, it, it's better than a plain vanilla uh, VCA. It acts fine as uh, standard VCA with some clipping. Uh, soft clipping so it smooths out the edges, gives it a little fatness, and then adding an LFO signal can make a lot of, as you heard, uh, grittiness and other things come out too. Uh, I didn't add a second sound source because uh, I didn't want to drag something else out here. So uh, this is a good unit. A very The other thing is it's nice and narrow. It doesn't take up much uh, rack space at all. So. Uh, you won't be disappointed if you get this. It's a relatively uh, straightforward build. So take a look at it and hope you enjoyed this video.